Hello, everyone. It's Producer Spouse here. Uh, Before we begin today's episode, I just wanted to put a content warning up for anyone who needs it. The episode of America's Next Top Model that we discuss in this episode involves issues of eating disorders and later prompts an albeit brief mention of domestic abuse. Now, as with all things of a sensitive nature in a reality show from 16 years ago, while I feel that Aaron and Cassie do a good job of handling the discussion responsibly, the show they cover, it's fair to say, does not. If you need to skip this episode, that's all right. We are going to do a brief recap of the entire season leading up to our season finale episode uh, later this fall. And in the meantime, if you or someone you know is struggling, please leverage the many private and confidential resources online and in your city. Uh, Here in Ontario, we have CAMH, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, and similar programs close to where you listen are available as well. Okay, that's all. Uh, Thanks for listening. We love you. We had cell phones in high school, but like there wasn't a problem of people pulling out their cell phones because there was no way to text. There wasn't anything cool on like them you yet. could text, but it would take forty eight <laughs> minutes. So there was no like, like quick the, sending. The message. only people I remember having cell phones that were like immediately used were like the drug dealers in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they had cell phones. And we they, had a paging problem. Their first problem. and last names were. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think he's in jail, so I think it's fine. <laughs> JK, are you trying to buy drugs? Are you a fucking drugs? cop? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Spaz is the cop. Oh, no. It's not me. I'm not the cop. The cop was me the whole time. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It only took to episode five, bitches. Oh, bitches. <laughs> Welcome to Resting on Pretty, a podcast about America's next top model. (laughs) That's Cassie. And over there is Aaron. Hello. (laughs) Hello. We're back, back, back again. You don't know it, but we've taken a couple of weeks off and we're confused. Yeah. There was some vacation. There was some new work arrangements. Yep. And uh, and we kind of, we got off our mark a little bit there. (laughs) We're learning how to do this again. But we're back. We're sweating. It's It's all great. great. Everything is as it should be. And I just want to point out that I already have received a text. Oh, Lord. Yeah. So Aaron thinks that she's extremely popular. popular. Can't have her phone out. No. Because it's too distressed. Distracting. It's very distracting. It's going to vibrate <laughs> everywhere. Um, and I'm very popular. Um, so, hi. Hi. Talking head. Talking head. How are you? I'm good, actually. I mean, like, we haven't <laughs> we haven't done this in a while, so obviously a lot has happened. There's been a lot. But I would say the thing I'm most amped about is not my new job. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. <No. laughs> which, which is fantastic. And thank you, Cream, again for hiring me. But um, that's not that's not it. It's that I gave myself a tattoo last Woo! night. <laughs> and uh, and there's been a lot of heat on me recently for um, the tattoos I have yeah. or want to have or mm-hmm. have told or not told people about. Mm-hmm. And uh, now that it's all out there, I can just do whatever I want. You can do whatever you want. So where's this tattoo? So this tattoo is on I my wrist. <laughs> you can see it. It's yeah. right here. It's right and, there. And uh, it's a little stick and poke. And it's of a tooth. It's a little tooth. Because I have a lot of problems with teeth. <laughs> and I always have dreams where they're falling out of my head. Yeah. And so I've, I've, I've wanted to get a tooth for probably 10 years. Awesome. Easily 10 years. Yeah. And so I finally did it last night while we were watching Skins. Nice. Yep. Very just good. a Just a nice fun time. How long did that take you to do? Oh, it was cute because Jake went into the bathroom and then came out and I had drawn it in pen. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, I draw it first to see if like the placement yeah. is okay. And... He was like, oh, is it done already? And I was like, in five minutes? No, a, t- that's not how any tattoo works. He has a tattoo. You <laughs> and, know better. and B, this is a fucking sewing needle in ink. Like, it this takes take hours. so long. So I would say it probably took me about 
two hours. That seems pretty fast. Yeah, I'm getting pretty good at it because I really jam it in there. Oh, nice. Yeah, people like that. I can't wait till you give me one. It's gonna <laughs> but be, it's going to stay. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> uh, but other than that, um, yeah, working. Uh, everything is so busy right now. I feel mm-hmm. like it's like nearing the end of summer for us where we're at right now. Yeah. And uh, and it just feels like everything's kind of like amping up. Yeah. For more work than ever. Yeah. Accurate. Um, but what about you? Um, so I went on a little family vacay, which mm-hmm. was lovely. Um, got to hang out with my niece and nephews who were very funny. Um, the best part of the trip was that. Um, so I have a little British nephew uh, who <laughs> is like three ish. And he has a little British accent. And um, my oldest nephew is seven. And so he's not quite old enough to be, like, logical about stuff yet. Sure. Like, he's, he's pretty grown up compared to the other kids, but he's still a kid, very much so. And so when the three-year-old is being totally three-year-old illogical. Right. Or I guess he's four. Um, three. I, I mean, three-ish. You're who, not wrong. Who knows? He's around of, three. He's small. He's a small person. Um, <laughs> so he has a certain type of, like, magical, illogical logic. Yep. And the seven-year-old is, like, learning about, like, rules and life and stuff. And so he cannot abide illogical things. I mean, I've met grown-ups like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> And so it just delighted me so much watching the three-year-old infuriate the seven-year-old. Um, and at one point, the little three-year-old kept saying, we were at, like, my brother's in-law's cottage. Right. So the older one's grandparents' place. And the younger one kept saying, this is my house. I live here. Now, I'm just going to interject right yeah. there and say that I have always had a phobia of uh-huh. small British children. Oh, yeah, he's Because terrifying. they're almost always so ghosts. Spooky. He's very spooky. He's so spooky. My sister often sends me messages of things that he has said. No, just don't ever like, show them to me. I never want to hear it. And he'll just say a random thing about me. And, like, so he lives in England, and I live in Toronto. And he'll just randomly be, like, walking up a hill and be like, Aunt Erin has strawberries for fingers. And... Very upsetting. And so immediately my sister will text me. That's not the worst thing that you can but have for fingers. Just out of nowhere, though, that's very spooky. Yeah. For him no, to just, like, I mean, look at his mom and say, spooky. I hate that. Yeah. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah. We're closing the door on that part of our friendship. Yeah. I'm over. not interested <laughs> no, in the no British area. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're saying, this is my house. I live here. And the seven year old would be like, um, no, well, no, you don't. It's not your house. It's not my house, but it's like more my house because it's like my grandfather's house. And, but it's not your house and you live in England. And he would be like, you could see his like tiny brain boiling with rage about the fact that it wasn't the little one's house. And then the little one would go, this is my house. <laughs> I live here. And they, I watched them do this for so long and it made me so happy. I was supposed to be like taking care of them and babysitting them. Uh, And I was like, I know I shouldn't let the small one infuriate the large one so much that the large one probably like throws the small one off the lake house. But it was such a delight. It's how kids learn. I love it so much. I love that spread of ages. Delightful. Um, I also cut my hair. Yep. And I'm very happy with it. Very good length. It was an emergency haircut based on (laughs) broken, a bunch of broken hair that I had that I I went in and was like, help. And now you can't even tell. And it's great. I couldn't tell before. And I'm like, check me out. And then today I dyed my hair and now it's sort of a pinky orange. It's like peachy, peachy orange. So those are the, the exciting new things in my life. It exactly matches the dress that you're wearing. Yes. Like, um. Exactly. I'm wearing my favorite dress that yep. I wear all of the time, and I accidentally dyed my hair the exact same color. Hmm. Accidentally. Mm-hmm. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> so that's me. So let's get into previously on. Previously on. Previously on. Last week. What happened? Man, oh man. Do we so, remember? Do you remember? We do. I wrote okay, it great. down. <laughs> I got my fucking great notes, job. girl. Uh, professional. So we had Ebony and Giselle thrown mm. down about cleanliness. Yep. Giselle was a big fat slob. Yep. And God, so young. Ebony had had enough of it, which yeah. is fair. Fair. Um, we get a little bit of a reminder in our previously on for the mm-hmm. episode of 
Elisa's apparent unwillingness to eat. Yes. So this didn't happen last episode, but it, it has happened previously. In previous episodes. Yeah. So in this season. Yeah. So it's kind of a hint that we're going to be reapproaching that. Yeah. Um, Giselle is called out for her lack of self esteem. Mm hmm. And uh, in the end, we say goodbye to Ebony. Sad. Bye, Ebony. I'll miss her. And now this week. This week. Season one, episode five. The girl who everyone thinks is killing herself. So straight off the top, slash 10 minutes into the podcast, uh, (laughs) content warning, eating disorders, um, food, dieting. Relationship with. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously, that's going to be an issue with all of the modeling talk. Yeah, throughout this Especially entire podcast. Especially at this time. Yeah. Um, but this episode in particular, it's a real focus, and um, I like to think that we will handle it relatively well. Yep. Um, but the show doesn't. The show is not great at handling it. Not and super I, great. I want to say yet because I do know the timeline that we're working with. Yeah. But I mean. We all know that the modeling world is not an easy ground for women to trout upon. Yeah. So. Yeah. And there is definitely a ton of pressure in both directions. You have to be super skinny, but also you can't have an eating disorder. No, absolutely not. Yeah. They don't want you to be unhealthy. No, 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 no. And I mean, the amount we've already talked about Robin being our plus size model. Exactly. Which is inaccurate yeah. <laughs> in my opinion yeah. and how much this season they have talked about bodies absolutely and i i like to think that going forward they they get they start to get a little bit more yes. understanding yeah but for now if you have discomfort with that topic this might not be the episode for you that's true yeah we get you so rolling right in okay uh so we've got six girls remaining yep and Right off the bat, they go over to Jay Manuel's house. Did you find this weird? Oh, it was so weird and so delightful. I went back because I, I hadn't watched in a little while. And I was like, maybe I missed that this was a thing because they're all acting like it's a very normal thing that it's they're all so doing. It's so weird that all the girls roll over and then Tyra and her assistants are yep. all there. But like... Not, a, not only time. her assistants, Jay's assistants, Jay's assistants. are there it's as like, well. It's like party time with... With the people, which yeah. is really nice. Yeah, so I don't really know why. And then no. uh, they're informed that they're going to be cooking. <laughs> the girls are. But it's also introduced, like, this time you guys are cooking. Yeah, so, no, wait, what? Has this, what? <laughs> it's unclear if this is, maybe they do, like, a Sunday dinner yeah, every week. Yeah, which would be really nice. I like to think that they do, but I also don't think that they do. Probably not. No, absolutely no. not. Um, and... <laughs> The theme is clearly being set for yes. the episode yes, at yes, this yes. point of like food, 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 girls, girls, girls. Which is maybe why they've chosen to introduce it now. I think like so. it was maybe more of a private getting to know you time. Yeah. And based on the content, they decided to include it in the episode. Yeah. Uh, so they're all cooking. Um, Tyra gets right in there, yep. which I thought was cute. Oh, she was being so charming. Classic Tyra. Yeah. Sticking her finger in the sauce. Yeah, and just total girlfriend. Robin goofs around on the phone, which I thought was delightful, because we we almost Charming. never see her have any fun. Yes! And it's terrible. Oh my god, I can't <laughs> believe I liked Robin for a whole minute. It was a miracle. Um, But then we get a little uh, talking head of Giselle, mm-hmm. and she is talking about Elise's eating habits. Yeah. And at this point right now, they're calling them eating habits. And those habits are that whenever the group is eating together, Elise eats very little or nothing. And it's something that has been brought to our attention before. Mm -hmm. And so we are um, being told about it again. And as soon as she said that, I, I... Elisa's plate while they're all having their like yeah. big pasta dinner and everything's yeah. there. And her plate was pretty full, but also Tyra served it. Yes. And I can't remember. I think it was Adrienne who says, oh no, it's uh, Kizzy who says that um, Elise essentially eats that night because Tyra's there. Yeah. And she claims that 
uh, Elise had mentioned had said this, so. Yeah, this was Simply why she was eating. Yeah, that she was like, oh, now I have to eat all this stuff. We also get a talking head from Elise, and she says she has no time for all of their bullshit. She yeah. eats when she's hungry, and that's that. Yeah. And maybe uh, she felt obligated to eat a little bit more because Tyra was serving it. Yeah. But I mean that, I mean, I, I can identify with that as well. Oh, like for if, sure. If the supermodel of the world is <laughs> making your plate, when you Tyra are going to, food, you're going to I eat the food. <laughs> I always do. Every yeah, time. I love the pasta. Every that Sunday when me. we get together. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So she does specify she's not eating anything in particular or not eating anything in particular yeah. uh, in regards to her weight. It's just a matter of when she's hungry. Yeah, she will eat. Maybe her stomach's smaller. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, and then we kind of just leave it off there. Mm -hmm. um, we go to next day and publici uh, publicity training. Mm -hmm. Publish training. Publicist training. Um, now they're going to be publicists. Uh, so, Cindy Berger. Berger? Ber I, Ber Ber Berger? 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 Berger slash Berger. Mm, Bergers. Um, <laughs> theme of the show. Food. Bird shirt. Burger. <laughs> bird shirt. Thank you, Steph. It's probably bird shirt. It's probably bird shirt. Um, she's Tyra's publicist, and yep. she has come in to give them some advice. Right. She is, like, this slow... Steady, clear talking, controlled yep. woman, which immediately put me on edge. I did not like her. Makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. She's, and one of her first pieces of advice was trust your publicist, which felt so very, I was like, ooh, spooky. <laughs> yeah. This feels spooky. I'm sure that's, I think that is good advice, generally speaking, but who spooky? She's spooky. Yeah. I, and I had a lot of problems with, um, well, I guess not a lot of problems with the advice she was giving. I had a problem with the advice she was mm -hmm. giving. Specifically, and we won't get into it yet, but that the journalist is there for a story. Yes. But it was also important to um, kind of... It, it kind of seemed like she wanted them to be careful with what they say. Yes. So there was a lot of back and forth between, like, honesty is the best policy, and the journalist really wants a story, and, like, the journalist is bad, so don't give him a story, but yeah. always be honest. And there was a lot of back and forth, and so, I mean, I kind of get the approach, like, always trust your publicist, because mm -hmm. that seems like maybe a field where they will know the right time to do either one of those and things. And which reporters exactly. are trustworthy and which yeah. aren't. I, I found it creepy when she said to, like, tell your publicist all of your secrets. Which, again, like, I think is good advice in a way. Like, this is the person who's supposed to be in your corner. Right. And they can protect you or... And they want to get ahead you. of anything yeah. that can come out so that they can spin it appropriately. But it feels so, so creepy. It's a little spooky, but that's all about being a publicist. I really like the way that Tyra talked about um, publicity and the way that, like... I don't remember if it's at this point or slightly later in the episode, but where she talks about sort of the manipulations of not even manipulations, but the way that like public, the public wants something from you, but also wants to see you fail. And right. that sort of um, that push and pull that you have when you're a celebrity and how to maneuver that line and how it can be a really difficult line. And that felt really genuine and like, well, and I, I find it extremely interesting that this is the um the little challenge that they're doing their mm -hmm. publicity interviews that they're doing this week and um our other theme of Elise's eating habits like because being in through control. editing you're kind of focusing yeah. on this very negative portrayal mm -hmm. of how Elise lives her life yeah which she goes on and on claiming that it, that's not the case and she doesn't have a problem. Yeah. And I honestly I believe her. I think I think that she's just eating as much as she eats. Yeah, I I went back and forth and like 
at the end of the day, I know what the show wants me to think. Right. Um, I also know what I know about the industry. Right, of course. Which is that many, many, many girls who are working in the industry or were working in the industry, I like to think that it is slightly better now. Slightly. Mm. I mean, ideally. I hope. I'm not in the industry anymore. But there's definitely, you know, a, a pretty normal amount of unhealthy eating. Absolutely, but... On that note, do you think that Elise is that type of person? It's so hard to say. Yeah. She she's definitely a person who strives for a ton of control. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of friends who had uh, eating disorders in their youth, um, many of whom are like fucking rad badass women now who have just like come through the other side with so many skills and abilities around like letting go of control and things like that. But if you are a sort of a type person who feels like they don't have control or feels like they have to be a certain way, I think that it doesn't always, it's not always, it's not always about thing. weight. Yeah. It's not always about body. It's often about control. And she, she is such a restrictive person in terms of who she thinks she is right. and who she's presenting. And that's the thing that made me think that it was possible. Okay. That's, that's actually really, yeah, I hadn't yeah. thought of it that way. And like the way she talks about her, like she says at one point in this episode, like she never quits anything. Yeah. Like those types of things where she just, she seems like she knows herself really well in certain ways and in other ways. She's still young. very young. Yeah. And yeah. And is is striving for a goal that is so unachievable. Exactly. And so perfect. And that I'm like, yeah, I could see you being pretty compulsive. And even at this point when uh, when we have each girl go in and do kind of like a mock interview, mm-hmm. when all the girls are waiting and Elise is doing her interview, mm-hmm. they're all kind of talking shit about her yeah. again. So it's all about like their perspective yeah almost and, and some with a ton of concern and love like i think adrian is coming from a place of she's our genuine concerned. care yes and giselle through this whole episode i feel like she's just trying to convince elise to quit yes there's a whole manipulation thing happening with her like oh i don't think you should be here because you need help yeah and then like oh like you're right this is really shitty that everyone thinks you need help so you should, like, maybe you, you all go home this week. Like, there's a, a ton of that, like, little dropped threads. We And we also get that strange little piece of gossip um, that after the dinner, some of the girls heard Elise throwing up. Yes. Yeah. Adrian. Well, because Adrian and Giselle and Elise share a room. Right. Right. And so there was, rumor has it, Elise was rushing for the bathroom and was fighting to get in and then there was things hurt but we also have no evidence of that and that feels like a moment that uh based on the editing style of the episode exactly we would have had more context than hearsay you would think so yeah yeah uh so when elise is in her mock interview <laughs> she actually um <laughs> okay so um just to go back <laughs> Oh, is this? Uh, are we talking about with the publicist? Yes, with the journalist guy. Yeah, ju- no, 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 not not or him with yet. the publicist. Yeah, okay. the publicist. Okay. Yeah, uh, the, I'm so excited to the talk training, about the training. The training for yeah. the trial. <laughs> uh, so Elise confronts uh, the eating disorder lies and how that's all that they are. Yeah. She does not have an eating disorder, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and that's the point when all of the girls are talking shit yeah. about her. She even specifically calls it a subplot. Yes. So, like, there is a sense that there she is knows an what's absolute subplot to in terms it. of the show. Yeah, and I mean, they're able to pull from another episode yeah. times when Absolutely. girls had a problem with her eating yeah. habits. Um, I just want to circle back for a second and talk about <sighs> Kizzy keeps getting like swept under the rug and being like kind of yes. unnoticed. Yes, I felt the exact same when we and heard her talk. She is so interesting in this episode and it kind of gets bypassed, but like her talking about, her, so her chat with the publicist, she's talking about her family and how she doesn't want to turn out like her mom and like the rest of the family um, and that's her driving force. Like it's, she's this 
super it's, interesting character. It's truly beautiful. And I feel like we don't She's, we don't get enough of her I mean, at yeah. all. And they just like slide right on by that. I still know almost nothing about yeah. her. And when she brought that up, I remembered we had heard it in the first episode. Exactly. But they haven't reapproached it no. at all. Her character arc is not being seen. And now to to be fair, there hasn't been anything overly stunning about her when it comes to being in the house. Mm-hmm. And those are the girls that get the airtime. Yeah. Uh, maybe when we have less girls, we'll get more so. of her because I feel like she does have like a she spectacular backstory. Yeah, exactly. And she is a cool person despite being with the Catholics. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, like, she's not obnoxious like Robin and. Uh, Shannon. Okay. And my now, note for Shannon is Shannon is Shannon. I wrote <laughs> I wrote Nicole equals virgin because I actually forgot what her name was. I had to look it for up. For four pages. I, I also had to look it up because <laughs> Shannon is maybe Nicole is who she's the blonde one. Right. I'm going to write. I wrote Nicole. Yeah. Constantly. <laughs> and then when they said Shannon here, like, who the fuck's Shannon? I, I was like, oh my God, I messed it up and I wrote it down. So yep. might say Nicole again. I mean, yep. Shannon. But yep. that's the thing is like, she won't say anything more about herself other no. than she is a virgin. Yeah. Ugh, the interviewer was clearly so bored with her. Um, Giselle is desperate to meet Michael Jackson. It was it was just which, uncomfortable. Ooh, in our day and it's age. It's also problematic now. Soups. Like, even without the context of having had the documentary come out in this past year. Yep. And, like... Having it's 2019, we're having a real reckoning. Um, people who didn't already know now know that he, he, he there's some bad stuff yeah, going on. We go, goodbye. Uh, but just even if even if it was like, I really want to meet The Rock, her intensity is so spooky and it's, scary and weird. It's also all that she talks about, which I think speaks a lot to her who she is self-confidence and everything that they've been kind of mentioning about her she's not multifaceted no she's she's not a person yet her thing that she decides to talk about with an interviewer about herself is that she loves a celebrity someone else yeah there's nothing about her there no it's about michael jackson yeah and she doesn't talk about like dance which she dances she doesn't talk about because i want to dance with him she is an incredible dancer or whatever like it's it doesn't come out of her skill set. It's just that's a person I want to know. Um, uh, we'll say I uh, after after this episode. I love Adrian. Yeah, I no longer like Giselle at all. I've switched you completely. Switched? Oh, hey! It, it only took five episodes <laughs> for me to make the Finally, decision fully. So Adrienne talks about how she dabbled in drugs when she was yeah. 13. She had sex. She was promiscuous. She was, yep. Just, I mean. She's so straightforward. Genuinely a regular girl. Cool teen. Not Re- me. Not me. I did not do any of those things when I was 13. I did all of those things when I was like 28. Add one year and then that's <laughs> me. <laughs> not 28, 14. <laughs> Oh my God, Cassie! Twenty nine. I'm sorry, Mom. My dad doesn't know how to listen to podcasts. Oh, good. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah, Rick doesn't have. Heaven a help if he. Rick will never know that I had intercourse at the age of twenty eight. I might have had it before. Aaron, you're slaying me. <laughs> I, okay, like I wasn't perfectly innocent, but I was a very innocent child. I was a very innocent teen. You were definitely a mom. I had a friend. House mom. I had a friend who had sex in high school. I went to a very small Catholic high school that was very well behaved for the most part. Um, there was a guy who looked like Jesus and <laughs> uh, he played Jesus in Jesus Christ Superstar because it was Christian high school. Right. Um, it also was K to 12. Uh, that's kindergarten to grade 12 for those of you who aren't from Canada. Um, and he got kicked out for being a drug dealer. But otherwise, there was, like, no drug dealers in the whole school. And there were, like, two gay people. One of them was me. And (laughs) But I had this friend in, like, grade 9 or 10 who was having sex with an older boy Mm -hmm. who was in his 20s. Gross. Mm -hmm. Like, retrospectively gross. Imagine being in your 20s and sleeping with a girl who's, like, 15. It happens a lot. It happens constantly. All of the time. Nearly constantly. Um, But we got caught... Passing notes back and forth um, in class the day that she had just had sex for the first time with this 
20 something year old. Oh my God. And originally it was a substitute teacher and the substitute was like, gonna get us in trouble. And then he read our note just to himself, not out loud. Thank and, God. <laughs> and my portion of the note was like, ew, sex. That sounds terrible. Why would you want to do this? I think this was a bad call. Oh, Aaron. do you want to go to a concert later? Like, <laughs> and I could see him just like looking at me, and being like, "Oh no, oh you poor girl, oh you tragedy machine, you're gonna have just it's some trouble be later." A real tough life <laughs> for you. And so we didn't get in any trouble at all. Things are gonna get you're worse. You're welcome, slutty friend. <laughs> I got us out of trouble with my prudish <laughs> shittiness. You're welcome. You don't want to talk about sex? <laughs> Ugh. Ugh, that's so terrible. Ew! What did he do? Did he put his penis around? <laughs> Uh, and then uh, uh, Robin says no ma'am so much I wanted to shove her off of a train she says nothing also which is like pretty clean sheet Uh, Nicole slash Shannon she (laughs) is boring yeah but at least she gives something yeah this this was like the era or around the era of like the Britney Spears I'm a virgin wink wink time right yeah. or I mean, maybe this that is was later. later this is a little later we're getting into but we at least know that people are into pre thought of yeah uh, this is women being like virgins. JT years yeah of, the, of Britney like this is this is yeah. a time when it was cool maybe to that, be a virgin maybe that could it wasn't cool it was like hot yes. Yeah. And so definitely a journalist could spin that. Yes. But, but what are you saying? No, ma'am. Robin isn't going to give anything. She's not interested in sharing her life. Not at all. So she doesn't understand what being a celebrity is. No, not at all. <laughs> um, so that's that's all of them. And we know that they're going to actually have more of a test later. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, when they go home, uh, this was something I kind of enjoyed. Is it Elise and her mom? Yeah. I loved her mom. So Elise has a talking head with her mom. She's like in the confessional and she's on the phone with her mom. And her mom says, having a bad day instead of a good day. And And I just love it. And Elise actually breaks down. Yeah. And she says, like, I hate it here. I don't want to be here. And there's a real genuineness yeah and i think their conversation i think that with all of the stuff that elise constantly says about um literally every negative thing she's said about every girl who's in the house (laughs) like specifically (laughs) points out everyone's flaws and why she hates them giselle you're so fucking stupid (laughs) etc etc this is this is a moment where you can kind of see that that is like very much her wall she's put up Absolutely. because she feels like an outsider. Yes. And she is. And she's just trying to vent and she's just trying to find her way. And she's just sick of people getting getting into her business. Yeah. And assuming her business. Yes. And, uh, and not and just letting her be. It was just such a lovely, pure moment. Yeah. It and was really nice. And then the thing that also brought it home for me was Elise talking about how she truly, truly hates Giselle. But <laughs> but <laughs> she's never going to do anything about no. it because Giselle's no, the only one with a hair straightener. If that isn't a fucking teenage oh, to 20-year-old girl thing... I just wrote it all caps. Truth! <laughs> she's got the only straightening iron in the house. You can't you can't burn that bridge. No, absolutely not. No, You're going to be the that. only one with those straightened hair. So Plus, she's got that pixie cut. Exactly, you have to straighten it, it out. Well, she's going to have a cowlick. <laughs> Fuck. And that was the purest moment. I have never on top related of the to purest more. moment. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, I did appreciate when she was back talking to the camera and she said that she was trying to suppress her intellectual superiority. Right. And like, then we get first episode of Lisa's back. And then, yeah. But see, I see that as more of her. That's her wall walling up Absolutely. really quickly. Yeah. I'm smarter than everybody, so it doesn't yeah. matter. You're uh, all bullshit. And I just love, ignoring I love it. when she gets like it is, I love it. I love it now that I know she's not actually a dick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's all just defense mechanism. We get another weird Tyra male. 
Yeah. That everybody is to dress comfy at 830. And you know what? I'm not even interested in talking about this part because I don't understand the purpose of it. Okay, so I am interested (laughs) in talking about it for a few reasons. So Tyra comes over to the house. First of all, she tells them all to go to one room. In the Tyra mail. Also, their comfy clothes are exceedingly different than my comfy clothes. They're matching. They are given matching loungewear, quote unquote loungewear. Sure. Which is like a black tracksuit. It seems hella tight also. Yeah, it's real tight. <laughs> it's a zip vest. Yep. I think top. Like zip. it's just a ve- vest just a top. Just ve- vest top. And some black leggingy pants. Yeah. Tyra rolls in in her dusty blue velour tracksuit. Extremely on board, though. Very, like, <laughs> juicy couture slash, I guess, did Baby Fat do that? I feel like... I feel like it would have had it to probably be. probably would have been... <laughs> I feel like this was maybe fat. just because they hadn't advertised for Baby Fat Exactly. Yet. And she the comes of this into whole idiotic thing. the room where they are, which I can't remember what their room is because you can't actually tell what the Tokyo things are. Tokyo room. Well, no, then she takes them to the Tokyo room. Oh, okay. She comes into, like, a random room. <laughs> Whatever, like, England or wherever the fuck the other room is. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> the Canada room. Of course, yes, the Canada yeah, yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, you can tell from... The one that no one wants to hang out sheets. in is kind of cold. <laughs> <laughs> but very polite. Um, and then she takes them to the Tokyo room, which has been done up in a meditative style. It was dark and there are candles. And what I want to know is, were those Buddha statues there before? No, they brought in. I don't in. think so, but I was like, did they have the, Buddhas the in sneaky the Tokyo produ- room? The sneaky producer who oh, yes, brings in the Tyra mail, he dragged those statues in while they were all like being angry about Elise. Exactly. <laughs> Just keep fighting about her eating disorder. Drag, drag. I like to think that they're actual concrete. Someone out there? The garden Buddhas? Uh, Somebody's in here. Somebody's in here. (laughs) Can we tell that story? No. Okay. Um, So Tyra does ask them, like, who doesn't support you? Right. And there is a, like, bit of an interesting conversation, which we're just going to skip right on over. Right. To get to... Elise talks about... This whole theme. Yep. This episode. Brings it up. She's angry. She feels like she's eating extra to prove herself, which feels shitty. It was a good talk. And Tyra's advice is gobbledygook. Utter insanity. It's not. It's it's, not. Well, because Tyra's not able to give advice. She says... (laughs) She's a maniac. Something to the degree of uh, beautiful women cause insecurities... Rather than I should lose or gain weight. As if, like, the goal is to be the beautiful woman who causes insecurities, but not the beautiful woman who says, okay, who like, makes people want to so lose. So you or gain got weight. more out of, out of it than me because I thought it was just a mad lib. I wrote out all of the words <laughs> and then I tried to, like, build them into, like, I, I, I reconstructed it like a boggle puzzle. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then at the end sentence. I just wrote, what? Yeah, no. Because <laughs> what, Tyra? No, that's not helpful. Uh, Next I, day. Yeah, that, that's uh, all for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Idiotic. That. Thanks, Buddha. Um, Central Park. Yep. Publicity tour. Interview with Steve Santagati. San- Santagati. Quote, I am a member of the press. He's a member of the press. I love a member of the press. Did you know that he is a member of the press? He's a member of the press. And in this day and age, members of the press are greatly uh, underappreciated, undervalued. And it's time that we held up and coddled and loved a members of the press. Are you talking about Twitter? No, something else. Something bigger. I'm trying to talk about (laughs) the medias. And the, yeah, that's the, what the I said. Press. Twitter? Is it not Twitter? <laughs> Tell me if it's Twitter or not. It's not Twitter. It's not Twitter. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, the New York Times. I don't know so what Steve, newspapers Steve are Steve even Steve the anymore. media says, uh, I'm going to fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Do go on. So Steve's going to uh, give him a little bit of a, an interview. Mm-hmm. Uh Carriage. They're gonna go on a carriage ride for some idiotic reason. I feel like there How else are you gonna do an interview. Maybe in eleven City? better places to do this interview. <laughs> eleven that we, we that they've been they in. <laughs> no, eleven different places. We got time. We got time. Time. No. Tokyo room. Canada 
Judgment Room. <laughs> judgment Room. Um, a cafe. That place, the dock that they did a, the B-roll on. A pizza place. Pizza place. <laughs> Robin was there. Wyclef Studio. <laughs> no, that's a terrible place. That place is never to be spoken of. The place about. with the weird, um, the meeting of the minds thing that they did. And the, the theater? Sh- Shannon didn't want to go because she was sick. Oh, yeah, the embassy. <laughs> yeah, with um, Kanye's mom, other mom, different mom, Jay-Z's mom. <laughs> Puff Daddy's mom. It was Puff Daddy's mom. Was it? <laughs> it was. We're going to need a check Spouse. on that. Oh, Spouse has us that we have seven. 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 We can do this. Um, um, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm just going to say a bar. The bathroom. Okay. <laughs> they haven't been in a bar. The lo- No, but I'm just saying they could use a bar. Sure. Um, the lobby of the hotel that they're staying in. The bench with that pigeon. Yeah. yeah, we did it. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing that's happening in my life is there's a pigeon on our balcony. Well, no, we're not talking about it. You have to talk about it next no, week we now. Oh, nope, too late. Okay, fine. Next week. Folks. Spoiler alert. Tune in next week to hear about the status of the pigeon that Aaron's oh raising. Oh my god, I hope that the babies are here. <laughs> so, they get in this carriage with... What was his name? Steve, Steve? Santagati. Steve I was Santigati. busy thinking about how long eggs gestate for... 14 to 17 days. Okay, well you already looked it up. I did so some that research. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks, I guess. Because at first it had been like two days and I was like, are they born yet? Internet will tell me. Two days. They weren't uh, born yet. Alright, well, anyway... <laughs> So I'm sorry, just you stopped yourself from telling the full story. Is yeah. it clear to our listeners that no. there are two pigeons living on our balcony no. and they have laid It's not clear. No, we no. told them they'd find out next week. <laughs> Tune in next week. Spouse is so bad. We at are this. we already blazed past yeah. the you time didn't. when you talk about your time. You, you have really. blazed by it <laughs> in ten, ten by to fifteen it. minutes. He is wasted. It seems like that is blazing. Seventy eight seconds us. of our time Ugh. on this. Classic. Yeah. Anyway. So the prize for this uh, mini challenge mm-hmm. is that uh, someone gets to bring a family member or, or special someone. Which is lovely. Visit, which I think that's so nice. nice. And everybody's kind of excited about it. And a- Elisa and Giselle are like, boyfriends! And Adrian is like, I want to see my mom. mom. I want to see my mom. Which Adorable. is so sweet. Oh, I love teens. Um, So let's go through yeah. what everybody talked about. Okay. Adrienne. Adrienne. Uh, she's a tomboy. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote 16 sex, so I assume that she was 16 when she had sex. That makes sense. Yep. Um, Not 13 then. No, but she did drugs when she was 13. That yes. she told the publicist. I never did drugs, so I don't know anything about that. <sighs> sure. Um I really liked her interview. I feel like I she was too. very real. And we yeah. only get very, like, quick clips of it. We don't but get a lot out of everybody. Super personable. She... Talks easily and is like conversational. And it's, it's honest without being horrifying. Yeah, she's not know? oversharing. She talks about her mom. She talks about modeling scams. Yes. That they went through and like how she loves and appreciates her mom. Which is very, very smart as well because she actually talks about modeling. Modeling! <laughs> Which is like, <laughs> did you know that's why we're here? I have always liked <laughs> to model and wanted to model. <laughs> And I've been screwed over by different things before because yeah. I have tried for things like this before. This. Yeah, exactly. Very um, good. Robin oh my talks about religion she and then she's nothing. She's morally correct. Mm. Um, Steve <laughs> says, I just feel like no one's that put together. No one's that perfect. Which, true, Steve. Yeah. Steve, yeah. you have a very good point. He's not wrong. Steve, you're good at the press. Uh, Casey is sassy but classy. Sassy but classy and Loved motivated. Her. She's charming. Yeah. She's totally charming. <laughs> Shannon says, well, that's your opinion about her. Oh, right. I didn't know what you're talking about because I had written Nicole again. Yeah. So Nicole says, <laughs> well, that's your opinion. <laughs> Nicole slash Shannon mm-hmm. uh, mentioned she's a virgin again. Yeah. Of course she um, does. No drugs, no sex. So she's fun. In talking, but it's still very heavily religious. And it just, it feels very... Fake. Controlled. Controlled. That's a better word. And not in a way where, like, oh, she's in control. It feels controlled. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, Giselle 
um, talks about how she won't go nude she for will some not reason. Do nude modeling. Yep. Doesn't matter how much money they offer her. I didn't really care that much about no, it. That was boring. Um, and Elise. And Elise goes Hot fucking wild. negative. She just bashes on everyone. She talks shit about everybody. She's outspoken and real. Except for she says nothing negative to say about Keezy. I mean, fair. Like, Holla. Yeah. There right. is nothing negative to no, say about her. No, she's fine. She's great. Um, <laughs> the interviewer asks her, what do you think about all this Christianity? Oh, wow. Because he clearly was not he, a no. fan. And I mean, this is, this is also generalizing, but I feel like, especially back then, that's not what they want to hear hot girls talking about. Which yes. is a problem in itself. Yes, of course. Uh, but they don't want to hear that you are a perfect virgin unless you're going to be, like, slutty about it. And that was very much the that world that the we time. used to yeah. live in, which is disgusting. And, like, religion is boring. I mean, yeah. Right? Like, no matter what your religion is... That is not going to be the most interesting thing about you. No, and it's it's, it's also not it's you. It's just a part of who you are. It is not you. It on, shouldn't be. You. And on that note, it's it's in the same realm as Giselle only talk about talking about Michael Jackson. Yeah, it's not exactly. It's not who you are. You have other parts that yeah. are you and that make up your personality and yeah. make up who you are beyond just this other a Bible. thing that is controlling you. Yes. A series of rules. Whether it's a love of a celebrity or a series of rules from the Bible. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so we get our winner. It's Elise. Which, for being textbook wrong te- as an te- interviewer. Textbook wrong. And so this is, I was so confused because I was sure that someone else was going to win. I thought so Adrian. I thought, I, thought, I, I did I thought think Adrian was going to win. Um, but as a as a like journalist, yep. As a member of the press, you want you want that juicy you want shit. The, you want at least the journalist wants the story. Yeah, who's going to like dish all of the gossip that's happening yeah. in that house? Hot goss, hot goss, yeah, what hot goss. We all love it. <laughs> um, and then it was his other pick, correct? She gets to pick. She gets to pick she gets someone. To pick. Okay, so our classic, uh, you get to pick a second a, person to a win friend. the prize. And she picks Adrian. Which I thought was just lovely because Adrian started just full on crying. Which, and for the first time in ages, I really liked Shannon slash Nicole because she starts crying just through sheer happiness. Yes. On behalf of Adrian. Well, and that's the thing, like, I feel like you, <laughs> I'm not going to say you can't because there is someone who gets bummer about it yes but you you shouldn't be upset that someone won and gets to see their mom if that's what they yeah wanted to do and specifically adrienne is so excited to bring her mom there not just because she misses her mom and wants to see her but because her mom has not had a chance to travel a bunch they don't have a bunch of money and so she her mom gets to come to new york and she gets she's so excited about getting to do this thing for her mom and she references almost feeling guilty about having to um like take her mom's money for all of these modeling things that ended up being scammed so the fact that she gets to kind of pay her mom back a little bit yeah is really really sweet and it's it, it is very wholesome and it's a side of adrian that we didn't get to see and yeah for someone to be in their early 20s and that close with their mom is just beautiful because... And that giving and self-aware and, like, yeah. aware of the sacrifices that your parents have made. Like, I was not that at 20. Yeah. Absolutely, I was not. Yeah. And so it, it is It is very wholesome and very sweet that yeah. she gets to have her there. <sighs> She's such a good girl. Um, So we're going to be doing our fifth photo. Um, Should we take a break? Yeah. Let's take Let's a break, break before we stop, talk about the fifth photo. Yeah. 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 So John Silverman's back. Yep. And he's taking the girls swimming. Swimming! 
I think it was just an opportunity so he could take his shirt off. I mean, obviously. And then, how many steroids does he do? Oh my god, so many. <laughs> I did, uh, Elise loves to swim. Yep. I liked watching her in the pool. She was very happy. She was having a nice time. She put her head underwater, which yeah. is something no one else seemed to yeah. do. Which fair, a couple of them have, you know, like braids and weaves and things. I yep, can understand yep, 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 yep. the hesitance. But also, it was nice to see her just like being. Yeah, and Ooh. having fun. And yeah. uh, she mentions that she really loves swimming yeah. and she's done it all her life. And it's a thing that helps her. And I think maybe that's something she needed this week as well. I just want to talk real quick mm-hmm. about John. And how we already know that I think he's bad at his job. And he's pretty bad at it. Yeah. And an idiot and dumb and bad. Um, but so he's obviously been filled in on on the hot goss on Elise. Yep. And he says afterwards, like, oh, she was able to push. She, she, she was showing that she probably doesn't have an eating disorder. Oh, my God. But like. Such a meathead thing. Like, they were probably like, so hey, stupid. John, can you talk a little bit about Elise? Because people, this is the theme we're going with. And yeah. he just straight out said it. Well, and but also, like, again, returning to people I have known who have eating disorders. Th- being able to work out does not mean you don't have an eating disorder. No. Being able to push yourself does not mean that you don't have an eating disorder. If anything, it strengthens the perspective that you shared earlier. Exactly. That she is a perfectionist she and is like driven. needs to have yeah. everything exactly. a certain way. And she is unable to... Yeah. It's yeah. just like, like... I can... I know girls who ran like three miles every day and did... 30, 40 sit-ups every half hour or whatever the fuck. But that's the thing. Like, like, exercise in itself can be a It uh, is part of the compulsion. Of the, yeah, exactly. Absol- like, not to say that she does or does not. I do not know. I would be speculating. I don't know her. But just for him to so glibly be like, duh, she was athletic in the pool. Eh, she doesn't have any disorder. Guess she doesn't have one. Fucking piece of crap. It, it's just, I hate it's, him. it's dealt with in a very, very unprofessional way, which... Yeah. I understand the other girls having yes. those perspectives because yeah. they, they're they 20 Young year olds. Women living in the space with her. And living in this world with her of yes. modeling where you want to be the skinniest and you need to be the skinniest. They understand that. And pressure. Yeah. And maybe a part of it comes out of a jealousy or comes out of, a, out of a pressure yep. that they're scared that she's pushing onto herself. Yeah. Absolutely. But regardless of it, the. The adults in this are not dealing appropriately. Watch fucking dum dums. But moving on, so we go to our photo shoot. Photo shoot. It's a Reebok ad, and it's a movement ad. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to dance a little bit. Yeah. So it's yeah. It's a model dance. You, you model dance. So that's model the word. dancing. That's the term. So, so you're not technically dancing. No. This is this is actually how I dance. Where yes. You can't yeah. dance, but you can. Pose sort of pose. Dance. Yeah, yeah, I'm real good at pose dancing, yes. but not actually dancing. Yeah. No, no, no. And it's not even better if you don't have to <laughs> be on like on a rhythm or a beat. Like if someone's just taking pictures of you, so you're not even worried about music. Right. I can do that. Great. Simple. Love it. I, I actually can't. I tried when I can't do tried the model, to model dance now. No, and I often photographers would be like, and now we do the dancing. And Did I'd you be dance like, dance? Nope. Just can't dance. <laughs> Just none, none no. of the above. None of the no above. Thanks. Uh, no thanks. No thanks. I'm busy. Do you want like still though? Can do that. <laughs> I can do. I can do hand under head. Here's the thing, and this will not translate <laughs> on the podcast. But look at what happens when I try to do jazz hands. One of my hands, great. It's completely off motion. It's this like, one. It's like half of your body is in the movie Us. Yeah, exactly. You're just a little bit. I'm half Us. (laughs) And I I just feel like my entire being is just like one half of me can figure it out. It's like the other half of me has no fucking. Maybe we'll need to we'll need to post a little bit of a video of Aaron trying to do just a simple simple jazz jazz hands. It's my party trick. It's not great. It just goes off the rails so hard. Bad stuff. It's teetering up in the background. I cannot model dance is the point. Okay. Um, They have a photo partner. And this is where I have lots to say. This is where I figured you might have lots to say. So it is from the Denver Broncos, the rookie of the year, Clinton Portis. What do we know about him? So while I was watching this episode, Jake was 
sitting with me, my fiance. Quick recap: Jake has a sports podcast. Uh, yes, his sports. sports Feld. Yep, it's called Sports Feld. You can find it on any listening device to app thing podcasting where, where, where'd you get us from do the same get it from for him <laughs> do it do it well. also there uh, <laughs> so jake runs a uh, a sports podcast with his friend andrew zuber mm-hmm. and uh jake was sitting next to me while i was watching this episode and they introduce clinton portis as the broncos newbie yeah little and baby little jake babe. almost started to cry <laughs> here's why Wonderful. Too old now. <laughs> of course. Of course too old now. Clinton does not play football anymore. Nope. He's no longer sporting. Yeah. So the Checks thing out. that the thing that Jake remembers him best from is Madden two thousand three. It was mm-hmm. a video game. And um he remembers that Clinton was a very big feature in this game. Right. Uh he hardly remembers when he was new. At playing. Well, and he this, actually stopped playing in 2010. So this aired in 2003. Yeah. So this would have been around the same time, so except that, filmed slightly earlier. This this makes a lot of sense if, if Madden was something that Clinton was going to be participating yeah, in. Yeah, so he's working towards... He's the big shot. Absolutely. He's the new big baby. Um, so Clinton has not been playing since 2010. Oof. Uh, I said, well, what's he do now? And Jake shrugged at me. And then a full <laughs> 15 minutes later, I realized that he had been Googling the whole time. Oh, okay. So here's what Clinton is up to now. Okay. He went bankrupt oh, no. in 2015 oh, due to fuck. poor financial decisions made by the people that he was hoping yeah. would make his financial decisions. Yeah. In 2017, it came out that he had contemplated murdering his previous <gasps> financial advisors. Shit, this I remember. Yep. Oh my god, as a murder murderino, uh, yep. I'll just get, I'm going to come right out and say it. As a murderino, I remember when this happened. Well, this Holy is shit. This is truly lovely because um a big, <laughs> a big thing that brought Aaron and I together was love of true crime. Absolutely. And uh having oh, so having cool. that relationship between a sport thing and a murder thing. And a modeling thing. And a modeling thing. It's a perfect trifecta. Look at you. It's a perfect trifecta. So smart. Just a, I went English major. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> like it's got to count for something. <laughs> Please. So beyond that, um, we don't know too much more about Clinton Portis. He he was he wasn't a big thing at this point. Right. Um, and I mean that only figuratively because physically he is a very big. He's thing. a big dude. And he comes out decked out in his Degrassi blues. And when I said that to Jake, (laughs) he didn't speak to me for two hours. Can you you please provide some context? So, (laughs) my fiance was a character on the TV show Degrassi The Next Generation. Uh... Jake Goldspeed, not Jake Epstein, for no, those not, of you not, who not, the, not that Jake are aware of He's more than one Jake. Jake, the other Jake, and the Degrassi colors are blue and yellow, and so uh, Jake angrily pointed out to me that this is also the color of the Broncos, and to stop. Oh, he was wearing a Broncos jersey. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, but I. Don't know anything about sports. Why would you? <laughs> or the Broncos. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, and so I said, look at him coming out in his Degrassi <laughs> blues. <laughs> and Jake got oh, understandably no, furious with me. That's a delight. Oh, I love that. Yeah, he's a big dude. Um, <laughs> our photographer, <laughs> Daniel Gariga, who I feel like we see more of Daniel Gariga as the series, go- series goes on. Is it that a fact? Be- it's not... I can't promise. All photographers look the same to me. Yeah. The name's super familiar, so either that or he, like, goes on to kill someone. But most likely, he's just, like, sure. a photographer. So. We have our stylist, Derek Kahn, again. Yeah. We have seen him previously. Absolutely. And he's very fun. And uh, Jay Manuel does makeup for everybody, so of he's course. hanging out in the background there as well. Having and great I like this because I feel like we're getting a lot more of Jay. Yes. And we're introducing him a lot more into... And he's very, like, personable in this season. 
And like more friendly than and- again. I remember him being a dick, and he's not. Yeah. So no, I'm wondering if that changes at some point. I feel like he becomes more of a like higher power, right? At the seasons go on, whereas now he's like not one of the girls, but it's like definitely like their confidant a little bit, and it's like right. he tells them how it is. But it's like their friend. But he's also them. helping. Yeah, exactly. He's telling he's them like, how it is and helping them. Yeah, like I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to like hurt you a little bit, but it's still like, it's going to help. Yeah, exactly. Um, this photo shoot needs to be made sexy, so we cut up they a cut bunch up the of jerseys. already quite tight and provocative outfits. Yeah. And at this point, let me tell you, I missed Katie a little bit. I feel oh, like she, she would have killed. This she would have excelled at this one. Yeah, although they didn't like her bikini ones, and I uh-huh. don't know if this is. More yeah. sexy or less? I mean, Keezy's shirt, where they cut down, like, so low, and yeah, then they did their right crisscross across the titties. Yep. Oof. Poor girl. It was real something. Um, so, we have Giselle. She's and a real dance dance. She does very well, I thought. I thought that she she had good movement. She had she mm. understands her body. But as soon as she walks off, she needs people to tell her how good she was. Mm-hmm. And this is where I started to understand what they mean about the needing confidence. Well, and, and this episode, it has shifted from lacking confidence to being manipulative about it, where she's fishing. And I wonder if that is... Um, I wonder if it is a shift or if it's just a better understanding of her tactics. I think probably because I think I don't think it's that she's like swimming in confidence and is like, tell me, tell me, tell me. No, she absolutely. But I mean, who whoops among us? (laughs) (laughs) No, thank you. Tell me how beautiful I am. I'm pretty, right? I'm terrible. (laughs) No. Uh, Oh, I have a friend, uh, side note, whom whom do you know, who I work with, Julia, who is an absolute delight. Um, And she and I often talk about our anxiety and so on. Um, And this week we're chatting away as we were getting set up for work. And she just stopped and was like, anxiety and a precursor to having a period. Just wanted to check in real quick and make sure you don't hate me and think I'm terrible. (laughs) I was like, yeah, no, great. All's well. No, what? Still friends. High five Z's. I love that. And I love it so much. I love that, like, simple, quick check-in to be like, I feel terrible and my body's telling me you hate me. Just want to... I think I might steal that. Julia, thank you. Yeah, it's genius. It's really genius. I really, really like that. I mean, I think I'm at the point right now where... I obviously think everybody hates me. Always. It's just where I'm at. Yeah, everyone does. If I haven't that. talked to someone in like <laughs> three hours, I'm like, oh, it's because they hate me, mm-hmm. probably. Yeah, they absolutely. fucking think I'm terrible. Yeah. Yep, definitely. 100%. And so maybe a quick check in. Yeah. Isn't it such a bad Especially idea? Especially amongst fellow neurotics. Absolutely. People who understand. Which is really <laughs> most the, of the people you want to be around. The only company I keep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, Giselle. Get it together. (laughs) Girl. Figure out how to tell people you need things. Oh, poor baby. Yeah, so she walks off and is like, I don't think I did a good job. I think I was too bad. And she needs the reassurance. And I I don't think it's an on-purpose manipulation, but it it is. It's vying for compliments when you know that you don't need them, but you need them. Exactly. Which, as... Anyone who is neurotic, you understand yeah. Yeah. what that means. You just, like, grow up. I get it. But grow up. You got to grow up. Yeah. Um, Shannon uh, is a little stiff. Yeah, she's not, not very flexible. I thought that she would have yeah. more movement. Well, she's a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> what a generalization. <laughs> I don't mean it. Aaron don't. Ha- Aaron hates virgins. Don't you heard it here. Don't treat me. Don't mean it. Don't don't mean it. Don't mean it. Um, but she looks great. She looks great. She looks freaking great. Yeah. Uh, Why am I saying friggin' now? Now I'm all stressed out because I called the virgin. You are a little bit stressed out. Bring more Catholic in your life. Yeah. Cassie is cute. Looks like Tyra again. Charming. Pretty normal. Yeah. Um, the photographer says she looks better in pictures, and that's what you want a model to be. Yeah, like, absolutely. She's, like, relatively lovely in person, but then in front of the camera, 
Pops? I like to think that I'm the opposite. I like to think I look really bad in oh, photos. Oh, I look terrible in photos. But I'm actually extremely I'm hot. I'm very attractive in real life. <laughs> so, for all of you listeners out there, I'm actually extremely good looking. We're very pretty. Photos are just the not both of us. great. It's why we failed as models, but we have succeeded as... Podcasters. People. <laughs> As people you listen to and never please, look at. Please keep listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> also, our confidence is great. Um, I think that Kizzy moved really well. Yeah, I, I, like I thought she had good movement. Like, I, I don't know if she has any dancer background, but she she was able to yeah. move yeah. well. Great. Uh, Robin, again, everything else is wrong. Yeah. She didn't like her co-star, which, to be <sighs> fair, he was a large wall standing behind <laughs> each girl. And it did sound like... He flirted with her more, probably because she's plus size, you know. Yeah. Oh, so uh, plus she's size. She's got that bodonk. Um, but she said he was very distracting and he kept, like, whispering things to her. It was probably like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, hey, uh, maybe Do you want to pose? Should you pose over here? <laughs> and, like, we we saw the other girls, especially Giselle, really use yes. him. He was a great prop. Throw me up in the probable. air. Like, he... You just have to tell him what to do. Yeah, he did it happen. And he will do it. He doesn't model. He doesn't know no, what that bored. world is. So he he just needs to be told what to do. And you need to be able to take that charge and you need to run that photo shoot. Yes. Um. So Robin sucks. She, yeah. she did fine, I think, yeah. when it came down to yeah. it. But it was it was difficult to get the shot. Yeah. And then... <gasps> We get a surprise. We get a surprise. And they had mentioned this earlier, uh, wondering when the family was going to be coming. Yeah, when did the guests when come? When were the guests coming? The, our prizes for yeah. Elise and Do they show up during the photo shoot? Adrian. Oh, God. Of course they show up during the photo shoot. And so, of course, they show up. Yeah. Um, Adrian cries immediately at tears, her mom. Tears, tears, tears. Yep. Don't mess up your makeup. I love it. I loved it so <laughs> much. So it was sweet. so sweet. And Elisa's sweet boyfriend looks like he might be on the Big Bang Theory. I said that he looked like a little sweet hobbity fellow. He is the former drummer of or keyboardist for the Shins. Really? Wow. Yeah. Marty? Yeah, Elise, right? Elise's boyfriend. Yeah. Marty. Her boyfriend was the keyboardist. Can you look it up Shins. make sure that it's Marty and not a different boyfriend? Because I feel like this is like a high school boyfriend. I looked it up because they... Um, because he looked like he was on the Big Bang Theory. Well, well, no, but this is... Hi, I mean, hi it's me. I'm on the mic. Uh, just <laughs> Someone who knows something about music, quickly. Well, well no, because I, I looked this up because um, my sister was friends with Elise on Live Journal. Ooh! Um, and, Shit, what a time. And so we, I, like, I was sort of acutely aware of this, and I remember as we were starting working on the show... I decided to look into, you know, if, if they stayed together after. Absolutely. Um, and here's another content warning for you folks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Uh, oh, no. Is he the Batman from the Shins? I don't know because I don't know a whole lot about the Shins. But um, he, they broke up after they both got arrested in some sort of ambiguous hotel domestic abuse now both you incident. mean marty and elise they both were arrested okay um and i believe if you look this up she is like very sort of candid and and almost sort of glib about it that's how elise talks yeah she's very yeah. candid and glib. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, might have, you might have noticed oh word really yeah um but but yeah so so he he was a member of the Shins, and I'm quite sure he's the keyboardist. I will look up his name right now. Okay, excellent. So that is very interesting to find oh, out. And I yeah, mean, he's a sweet little weird boy. Yeah, I figured he was uh, Big Bang Theory or in an indie band, and so I had a there 50 50 shot of yep. being right. Um, I thought he was going to be a hobbit, and I was wrong. Uh, he he does seem exceedingly proud of her. Yeah, Marty yes. Crandall. It is Marty. Okay, Marty, Marty Crandall. Crandall. Member of the Shins. He previously. does immediately roll in and be like, this eating disorder thing is absurd. Just like right off the bat. Yes. He has a lot of feels. So he's it. already been informed that yeah. this is. Um, which is fair. A potential, which I feel like they knew that this was always going to be the direction the episode took. Yes. Um, but he does seem very proud of her. He thinks Absolutely. Elise is killing it. He's so happy to see her doing this 
because he knows she wants it. Yeah. Which is an interesting perspective that we get because we know, we that, know she that she wants, wants it. it sometimes, but doesn't always want it. Yeah. And sometimes she wants to quit and sometimes she's just fooling us. Sometimes she's like, whatever, I could give or take a modeling. Absolutely. And so like an outside perspective of someone who probably knows her fairly well. It seems like, yeah. Yeah. It seems like uh, he is very happy that she's doing this. Yes. Absolutely. So they get to watch, the the guests get to watch their people do their photo shoots. Only a little bit. They aren't a little technically bit. supposed They're to be looking, like, but you get a like, lot of shots of yeah. them like peeking through the curtain, which is it's very just cute. adorable. Yeah. Adrienne, her outfit looks friggin' rad. She looks great. She's got the one long legging and the one like short short. Yep. Which is very 2019. It's, it's, it's what Kim K is doing right now. Insanely fashion forward. And I want to get like... I don't love the Kardashians. Yeah. So here's a... I'm going to disclaimer, which I loved for many years, the Kardashians. Not necessarily, like, actually their content, but what they... The way that they owned their imagery and... Marketed it? Yeah. I could go into a whole, like, art history conversation about... Sure. um, Portraiture, and I did half of a master's in portraiture. I'm obsessed with the idea of why we take pictures and make pictures of people. Um, But I really loved the way that they owned their images. And I I really love to look at them. Yes. I don't Um, don't love them. I don't don't love love a lot of what they stand for. Right now, I don't love the whole, like, Kanye era of Kardashians. It's not excellent. And how they kind of love the Trump, which is not surprising, but is also... Yeah, and there's all of the, the... Kylie weirdness. Yeah, and, and like Kim is doing some borderline blackfacey things. Yeah. Not great. But I still like Kendall. I really want her shapewear, even though. Yeah, her shapewear does look fantastic because it looks I mean so smart. And I I don't believe like I don't believe in shapewear, but I do, but I don't. As someone who's getting married in uh nearly a year, year to the day. Yeah. Uh, a year in exactly two days from this moment right now. When we're recording, you'll never know. You'll never you'll know. Never know You're never going to know. You, you dumbass. I'm pretty sure I already we're said it. We're tell you. Yeah, I already said it like <laughs> in the first episode. Um, but uh, <laughs> as someone getting married, I really love the idea she of shapewear. Because then you don't have to even go to the gym at all and you yeah, can get that it. fitted dress. <laughs> And the the thing that Kim has done with the like one long leg and one short short leg, you can have a slit in for the your yeah. shapewear. Then you have your slit dress, which is a I have cut so many pieces of. Shapewear. Oh my god, me too! I have so many in my wardrobe right now, but they're like bullshit. Yeah, with like weird fraying hems. Absolutely. So the point is, Adrienne is wearing one long leg already short, ahead of our so time. Ahead of our time, and I I do uh, commend our stylist. It looks great, Derek. It looks pretty great. Dad for this, because yeah. that was all his idea. Um, she's jumping. She is. She's athletic she's looking. Having a fun she looks time. like yeah, she, she looks knows great. what she's doing. She looks so athletic. It looks like. Do you remember there was a trend? I feel like it's probably still happening, but I haven't gotten Vogue in a long time. There would always be like of the main editorials. There was one like very romantic, uh, like clearly Grace Coddington directed editorial that was like in a chapel or something or like right. a storybook oh yeah, yeah yeah and then there was always one that was in studio of models jumping yes i love models jumping and this like adrian looks like a model jumping like she looks great and i i almost i almost wish that her mom hadn't shown up and i only say yeah. that because i'm curious to whether that boost of energy and that motivation came from seeing her mom Mm -hmm. or if it was there regardless and now i i do truly believe that it was there regardless i think so i just don't want it to uh come off as it was motivated because of seeing her mother yes you know what i mean although that's also charming it is it is still extremely charming but you you want to be able to pull that out regardless of what your mood is if your mood is up 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 then because i mean uh we get Elise going through Mm -hmm. and she does great. She kills it. Gariga said she'd hire her. He'd hire her. And is this 
is this because she got to see Marty? Or is it because... Because she's been having a really rough week. Is she trying to prove herself? Is she, like, fighting? Now, Elise has always been very strong in photos. Yes. So this is maybe coming out of nowhere a little bit, but based on the week, it seems like she's had crying on the phone to her mom, yeah. being picked on by literally everybody over Truly what she is or is not eating. Person. Yeah. Um, I wonder, had she not gotten that boost of confidence, mm-hmm. if her photo would have been as good? Yeah. Adrian, yeah, not so much. Adrian seems to be able to pull it out whenever she needs to. But I wonder if Elise would have been able to do that also. I hope she would. I'd like to think she would. But I think this week was more difficult. It was a rough one for her. For sure. More difficult than any other week previously. It was really hard on her. Yeah. And she's had some rough ones already. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Fun photo shoot. Everybody does fine. Pretty well. Um, Then uh, we get to have a a big dinner back home with everybody, and it's very sweet. And the mom and the boyfriend are with everybody. Uh, Elise and Marty are going off and smooching all the time. Uh, Mom and Adrian sit in the talking head room and have a beer and, like, chat. So their sweetest moment, and this is something that I, I... Noted because as uh, someone who knows a lot of people who have grown up in any kind of industry that uh, promotes celebrity, Mm -hmm. her mom is very supportive and not in the uh, not in the general sense. But Adrian keeps saying, I'm doing this for us like we need this. And she's referring, of course, to the scams that she had been a part of where her mom had lost money because she had put Adrian in these contests and they hadn't quite turned out to be legitimate. Yeah. And her mom stops her and says, it's not we, it's you. Yeah. It's not it's not you making money for us. It's you doing this for you. You, do this you are for doing you. this yeah. because you want to, and I am behind you, supporting you, and loving you regardless. I'm proud of you. I'm yeah. proud of you. And it's not. It's not something where Adrian has to pay her back. No, that's it's that, really that lovely. isn't even that isn't a thing in her head at all. And Adrian, well, and she even like doesn't remember the losses like it doesn't matter to adrian her. brings it up and her mom's like what and she's yeah. like remember like the scams and she's like i guess, I guess. like yeah it's not in the Should front happens. of her mind yeah she's thinking about her daughter who she's proud of and thinks is fucking rad and all she wants to do is help to uh provide any opportunity to exactly. get her to where she wants to oh, go and so i great. just think it's it's another pure moment on top mm-hmm. of many pure moments that we have during this episode yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, Robin stays in her room and doesn't join them for dinner. And what is she doing in her room? Reading the Bible. Of course. And we never get more information on exactly why. We don't know if it's because she would have preferred to bring someone herself out of jealousy. Um, it's weird. Like Maybe she's mad because she hates Elise. She hid, too, like when Ebony's girlfriend came over. She also hid, but that was presumably because she hated lesbians. So this is weird because as far as we know, she doesn't hate moms or boyfriends. (laughs) What if she hates moms? Robin, what is your deal? Robin's not telling you. It's a secret. You wouldn't understand. I would never understand. God tells her not to. Uh, So, I mean, whatever. I mean, they're they're probably better off not having Robin there. It seems like everybody Uh, has a really fun time and everybody has a big dinner. Yeah. And Elise eats whatever she wants to and nobody is getting upset at her about about it. it. Yeah. Thank God. We have just a really nice time with everybody. And then Um, Elise and Marty make out in the kitchen for ages. Oh, and I I do. I do love. Well, they make it like around the house. It seems they go to like different locations. Just like smooch. Yeah. Smooch Smooch everywhere. Just smooch. Very sweet. Uh, <laughs> and they do also get some Tyra mail mm-hmm. while they're there, which is fun because yes. I I feel like the it, then they're like, look, this is what we, ha- we do this, and everybody seems like maybe a little bit tipsy, yeah, maybe a little bit. Well, because we know that at least Adrian and her mom were drinking beer. Oh yeah, and they I have a, they have bottles of wine on the table, yeah. and it's all very very cute. Yeah. Um, 
And so uh, I think at this moment, we understand that both Elise and Adrienne have gotten more drive. Yes. In the competition, they got kind of that rejuvenation the that you, you look for, the boost of the person you love the most mm-hmm. coming to support you. Yeah. And it was at this moment the next day where I realized it's Shannon and not Nicole. <laughs> it was at this point in the episode. And so for five pages, I wrote Nicole. Just up until this point. Yeah, this was the moment, and I went, oh, damn. Don't you remember it? It was Nicole and Corey? No, I don't care. No, I still don't care. Oh my god, I don't care. I remember Corey, and I'm still sorry, all Corys. Not BMXers. No, never. (laughs) Never? I have a hard stance. I respect it. We get to our elimination. Elimination day. Okay, quick interjection. Who do you think is the top and the bottom this week? Ooh, see, now this one's tough. This is tougher than before because I feel like we are being pushed in a certain direction that Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily agree with. Right. So I feel like that is important to point out. I feel like the direction we're being pushed is to uh, presume Elise to go home. Interesting. I did not feel that way. Oh, I, did, I didn't think that at all. So I, I felt that based on all of the information about her, mm-hmm. we were being led to believe that with a Elise heavy episode yeah. and nothing particularly stunning that she had provided. Like, yeah, she won the interview, mm-hmm. but it was by doing everything wrong. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I I very much thought that they were trying to hint that Elise should go home, but it wasn't a hint that I fell for. Right. Who I thought should go home was Robin, because yeah. I'm tired of her, yeah. and I don't care what she did this episode, I just don't like her, and I yeah. want her to go home. Yeah. Um, best, I don't know that we're quite at the point where we're picking bests yet. I'm always picking bests. But, uh, I Judge. really, I really, really loved Adrian. Right. I thought that she yeah. did really well and she was really positive and there was nothing negative about her. I do think that Elise deserves a note in mm-hmm. that, in that with, um, everybody pointing shit out about what is and isn't on her plate. And this is where I wanted to share my little thing. Yes. Which is not, it's not technically an eating disorder, but it's still something that I do. And so when everybody is focusing on what she's eating on the plate, I got Mm -hmm. really mad. Yeah. Now, I have trouble when I have a plate of food in front of me and other people around me. It can be one person. But right. any amount of people, if they're around me, I get extremely anxious and I can't eat anymore. Interesting. And so when I go out to dinner with people, I make a point of saying I want it to be tapas and things that we can pick at. Right. Because then there's no way to clock exactly what I'm How eating. How much anyone has eaten. And now I go to weekly therapy and I have not yet gotten to the root of why that happens in my head. Interesting. But it is something that I have gone through my entire life. Yeah. So with people um, evaluating what oh, is on yeah. her plate and what she takes, because if if it's a situation, I went to a dinner this past week uh, for a birthday and it was one where there were a bunch of plates brought out, but then you put stuff on your plate. Right. So and then the there were things that were like non spicy and non cilantro, both of which I can't eat yes. for dietary reasons um, that were made almost special for me. And so Fuck. it was like there was a giant plate of stuff that I had to finish. And also there was everything else on other plates. And people were being very um, uh, aware of what other like people were to eating. to sure everyone eats enough. And I, and I whatever, got whatever. Yeah. And I yeah. got that anxiety of like, I am not eating enough. I need to try harder. And it's not like I don't like to eat. Right. Because I love eating, but I, for some reason, there's a part of my brain where I'm very aware of people watching me eat. Yes. That makes me extremely uncomfortable. Yeah. And I don't think that's what Elise has, but I do understand um, the frustration that comes from it. Yeah. The shittiness of having people analyzing and, and everything. And you're not even able to put it into words why you do what you do. And I don't, mm-hmm. it's, it's that thing where I think that you have a really good point about 
maybe where Elise's eating habits come from. And we don't know for sure that that is what it is. We don't know. But, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Maybe it is a type A kind of behavior. Yeah. But regardless of that, if there's anything, she's not aware of it. And so for people to be... Or she's not ready to be dealing with it on television absolutely. in front of everyone. And I think that's extremely fair. Yeah. And that frustration that comes from not being able to put it into words or not being willing to put it into words absolutely makes a lot of sense. And I, I mean, I don't talk to a lot of people about how I yeah. eat because it sucks and it's weird and I don't have the right way to talk about it. Yes. But there's no simple like, Oh, because of A, B, and C. Sure. This happens. And maybe one day, years from now, (laughs) I'll be able to say in front of the stage of our fans (laughs) what the reason is through years and years of therapy. But I'm not there yet. So I I really understand that frustration that she goes through and not knowing like how to deal with bitches. Yeah. And like, regardless of what her situation is, whether like... The whole episode was flipping back and forth about what I thought and what I think doesn't matter at the end of the day. Yeah. I know nothing. But, like, I can analyze and I know, you know, blah, 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 the things I've said about eating disorders. I also know, like, my mom, who is a teeny tiny little woman. She's like a bit of a little bird. That's who she is. That's who she's always been. And if she and I sit next to each other, I'm like... Five I owns big. Sure. Yeah. And if I were to sit there and analyze everything that I own eight, I'd be like, oh, she's never eating enough. She's like a little burn. Well, absolutely. But you have to take into consideration the human anatomy as exactly. well at that point. She has always been petite. At her very best, she has had like a, um, a millimeter of a tum tum. Like she doesn't, <laughs> she's not a big woman. She will never be a w- big woman. She has little bones. She has a little tiny body. That's who she is. Yeah. And you got them big bones. By all means, <laughs> fat shaming sucks. And everything to do with the way that we talk about people who are quote unquote overweight or don't conform to the norms of what body should look like is fucking terrible. But it is also true that although there is a ton of thin privilege and things like that, we also are equally shitty and judgmental of Skinny women. And that's the thing. It doesn't matter what weight you are. You're going to be thrust into some yeah. sort of box. Being a woman sucks. I mean, if you're, gonna, if you're going to learn anything, it's that being a woman sucks. Because yeah. it, regardless of what your shape is, you're going to be targeted for some different reason. And yeah. uh, there's uh, Jamila Jamal of uh, The Good Place, yeah. Yeah. who's been extremely vocal since she rose to fame mm-hmm. uh, on NBC's The Good Place, gotcha. uh, which is ending this season. And I'm so sad, but I hope that she just... Excels. I'm also very stoked because I love when a thing like wraps up, you know, like, does it properly. Yeah. And she's been extremely vocal, uh, predominantly, I would say, on Twitter mm-hmm. about the female form and stopping people from doing these idiotic get skinny quick schemes yeah. was where it started with those little well, pushing, gummy like, pills. Instagram like influencers pushing skinny oh, tea and yeah, the tummy exactly. teas. And yeah. she she actually uh, specifically, I, I don't want to say targeted, but um, brought up the fact that the Kardashians are um, promoters yeah. of these kinds of supplements. Yeah. And for the problem is it's not going to be people using these things within reason. And I don't believe that there truly is a way to use these things within yeah. reason. But the people who are going to be using them are 13, 14 year olds who mm-hmm. believe that this is the weight that they need to be. And yeah. they're going to look at these face tuned, body tuned, filtered out photos on yeah. Instagram and, and that's believe what they are, that that's what they're supposed to possible. be. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so she's been doing really, really great work in promoting um, realistic body positivity. Yes. And it's something that I myself struggle with a lot because regardless of what I eat on my plate, I have gained a significant amount of weight. And Mm -hmm. when you're prepping for a wedding, it's not exactly where you want to be in your life. (laughs) And uh, and 
reading her stuff every day helps every day. Yeah. In understanding like what it means to actually be body positive yes. and not just spew it. Yeah. There's also there's an artist I want to shout out. Um, and I hope that I get this name right. Um, she's an Australian illustrator and artist. Um, Frances Cannon, I think her name is. Buzz, can you check that? Um, who I think she uses the term fat um, or like fat body. That's but terrible. she does these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little like very simple drawings of herself and other women, but primarily her own body like with hairy legs and often very nude and like feeling like just groovy and and cool in her body. And I look at them constantly as a reminder to not hate myself. Yeah. And as a 35 year old woman who has known better forever and who has like been up and down and up and down weight wise and tried various crash dining bullshit and also been like fuck it eat drink whatever and everywhere in between i still struggle constantly and i still hate myself all of the time and her art is all about talking about loving yourself even when you're struggling talking about loving yourself through other people not loving you etc 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 she turned down a gig just this week for some celebrity that's doing a diet plan that asked her to do an illustration for them and she was like do you not get who i am and what my shit is like no da- fuck you she that's, wrote that's the, not my style she wrote the best letter of just being like why would you think that i would want to do this project yes i know we've been going for a while but it's i'm excited about this episode cuz there's a lot to be said the thing is um Regardless of <laughs> what you think other people think. So yes. we can sit here and say that body positivity Woo. doesn't matter what you eat or what you weigh. And Robin, you're not <laughs> super size. thick. You're not plus <laughs> size. But the the reality of it is, is as women, we're always uncomfortable in yeah. our body. <laughs> and we just are bombarded constantly. And you're never going to get over it. And I think that's why uh, I think Elise does deserve a special shout out here yeah. uh, in our who's on top yes. discussion, because I think that she did go through it this yeah. week. And I think that it's a really good representation of not only what was happening back then, but what still continues to happen now, yes. regardless of what you weigh, it's always going to be wrong for some people. Exactly. Yeah. So who do you think was on I thought, top? I thought Elise was on top. Because <laughs> I'm a very smart. Um, yeah, I thought Elise, because of, for the opposite reason, I thought the narrative was leading us towards, like, look at her overcoming. Right. Okay. And also because the show has a kind of fucked up view of bodies, it was like, blah, 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 blah. But she is the skinniest and she she's the best. She's very skinny. And so. she's pretty great. You never know. So who even cares? Who was on the bottom? I thought Robin was on the bottom, too. Was it because you thought she deserved it, or you were just sick anymore. of her? <laughs> I also thought she deserved it. She she was not phenomenal no. in anything this week. But also and bored. Yeah, bored. I, I don't think she was Stop. great. So uh, we meet our panel, Tyra. Mm-hmm. A great, colorful skirt. We've got a blue shirt. It's Is extremely... This where it oh, no, I missed the part earlier. Uh, spouse, I'm so sorry. I meant to talk about earlier when Tyra had the pigtails. Oh, she had very adorable pigtails very during the photo shoot. Yeah. Which Spouse has been playing Fire Emblem. Yep. Which is a new video game. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, some video um, games. And it has very cute characters in it. And one of the characters has the exact same, like, up and then, like, whoop, flipped out little pigtails. Absolutely. What's her name? Hilda? Is it Hilda? It's Very a cute. it's a really good look, and Tyra pulls off pigtails the way that I wish I could pull off pigtails, and I have thick fucking hair. You have so much hair, you could totally do it. I've tried. It doesn't look the same. No one can look that cute. No. Over the age of 12. <laughs> Except for Tyra. Tyra, you did it. Yeah, Congratulations. <laughs> so, we've got Tyra looking beautiful. Yep. 
Uh, we've got Steve as our guest, yeah. who was our interviewer, mm-hmm. which means that we're going to have a quick little interviewing time for every contestant. A little mini challenge. Uh, a kind of one by one analysis. Mm-hmm. And so our two questions that everyone is asked is, why do you want to win? And who should be eliminated? Mm-hmm. So we've got um, Robin wants to win uh, because of the platform she could have. Ugh. And she doesn't care who's eliminated because God will make the decision. I cannot. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Elise thinks that she should win because of the stereotypes that have been thrust upon her. Absolutely. Which I find very very real and also legitimate and like way to take a way to take the theme and turn it around and make it your own and then in case i didn't love her enough this episode the person she wants to eliminate is robin Robin. (laughs) adrienne she's gonna bring bringing some spice yeah and uh she thinks that shannon should be eliminated correct shannon i wrote rob shan so maybe both Shannon. Yes, Shannon. Maybe both of them. Also Robin, I guess. <laughs> uh, Shannon, I just wrote what? Because she <laughs> didn't give an answer that was legitimate. And she yeah. wants Elise to go home because of weight issues. Yes, of course. Idiotic. Helping. Giselle is going to bring attitude. Mm-hmm. And that's why she should win. What the fuck? She's never brought attitude at all. And then I guess that she want she doesn't know she was unsure of who should she's unsure about a lot of things yeah i mean she didn't want to throw anybody under the bus yeah i kind of thought she would name elise here because she had the problems yeah but i guess she doesn't want to do that in front of judges which i i do appreciate a little bit because she's not she's keeping it to herself but also she's not talking how she believes well and and like circling way back to us talking about drag race right um i used to think that i didn't want people to say what they think but i really like that drag race people are able to say what they think without being mean yes and like the and then they're able to talk about like well here are the reasons why drag queens are very good at that you know yeah and so there is a part of me that's like just fucking say it but I feel like maybe Giselle is not the point in her life where no she's a little bit no she can't figure it out um Kese um it's always been her dream to win Mm -hmm. and that's why she wants to win and she thinks Elise should go home which I I was a little bummed about I thought that she was a bit better than that but i mean it is what it is it is what it is so um photos wise yep uh elise did the best she looks weird she looks like elfy she looks great yep always great in photos yeah um janice did not like kese's photo no janice i don't like janice's no one likes janice um again they point out that robin is too old and too big yeah which is Janice wrong. says she's huge. And this is when Tyra comes for them. Yes. Which is a little bit of a redemption moment. Finally. Fucking finally. Where Tyra says that they need more people who are Robin size. Yeah. Because she portrays what a real American woman is shaped like. Yeah. And I and do they also, appreciate they also, that. Because Bo also says that Robin is too old. Mm-hmm. And so she calls them both out. She just, she's like fucking had it up to there with them. Yeah. Which I love. So I hope going forward we get less of the too old, too big, too small, too whatever. Yeah. Like there, there are so many different areas for modeling and there were back then as well. Yeah. Where you have the room to well, fit and, every. And you look back to like the original supermodels, like Tyra and her cohorts, they were shorter. They were curvier well when tyra was a victoria's secret model she was considered plus size yeah which is bananas yeah uh shannon shannon fine yeah adrian better and better they yep. still don't love her voice no which i i get i still don't love it but i yeah, do I love, love her i love her i love her uh kese has grown a lot yeah she's I shown agree. some growth which Absolutely. i agree with uh, Giselle is 
great at moving, but yeah. she's not confident. And this is where they voice their concerns Tyra about her um, fishing for compliments. Yes. Which I think is a very good uh, way to look at it. Mm-hmm. And they talk about Elise again, and perhaps maybe she has an eating disorder. It's a real thin combo. Um, and Janice is like, I love it. It's perfect. I mean, absolutely. I don't think that anything is wrong with her, but I also don't think she's too I also thin. don't think that Janice is ever right. <laughs> and I said, Janice is so bad, Jake agrees. <laughs> so, Thank you, Jake. Jake of Sportsfeld agrees. Excellent Janice Dickinson. Call. No good, folks. No good. Let's get <laughs> Michelle Visage in here. <laughs> And so, the order of our girls as called, with Number photos, Adrienne, Adrienne is our winner, even though they don't call it that, yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. best photo. Great. Kese, coming Great. up next. Woo. Still saying her name wrong. Love it. I am taking the, taking the tire approach. Keezy. Shannon, and she gets a note. Be more than just beauty. Good note. Robin. What the fuck? Get off your high horse is her note, and I agree with it. And Agreed. I feel like she should have been in the bottom for this. I I'm don't not know. gonna get into it. I don't know why she is I <laughs> bullshit. It's bullshit that she's at this point. The, <laughs> that she is above Elise is bullshit. And so that leaves our two bottom girls, Giselle and Elise. We get notes on both. Yeah. We know what those notes are. And we see Giselle go home. Yeah. I am a bit sad because I do think Giselle had something special. Yeah. Uh, but I am happy that Elise stayed after this Me week. Too. I think that she really, really deserved it. And maybe she found her confidence I after like to this. I think so. I like to think that she's growing every week to week. And do you have any background on Giselle? Well, did she first get of all, it, it, uh, to anything? I did appreciate and love Giselle's quote. Britney Spears lost on Star Search. Yeah. True and, and that's why I thought maybe she gained some confidence. And then I have... So she talked earlier, Giselle talked earlier about how her mom didn't believe in her. Right. And didn't think that she could be a model. Uh, which is a thing that I have some sympathy towards. I had a lot of people... Absolutely. It's not a job you yeah, can do. When I decided I wanted to be a model, a lot of people were like, that's fucking stupid. And to be fair, I was too old... Too short and too fat. So I, it was fucking stupid, but... The theory that you're too short... Insane. I know. It's a, it's all, like 11 feet taller than I am. It's insane. It's all insane. This world is insane. But she said, my mom is probably going to rub it in my face, so that'll be the only thing. And then I was like, oh, no, for the first time ever, I like to sell. Yeah, that, that was a real moment. Oh, no, fuck. Give us that. That's why she's... The way she is. Absolutely. Because modeling was never a viable option for her. And her mom was a shitbag. Like, the reason she's fishing for compliments is because she comes from a home that everyone is saying, you can't do this. Absolutely. Which just broke my heart. Um, I just had a little note saying that my sister was a mad supporter of me when I wanted to be a model. Very, very good. And my older sister, who fucking rules, but, like, when we were younger... We did a lot of the same things, and she often was like, why can't you read? And I'm like, because I'm so much younger than you, and I I don't go to school yet. I didn't do that yet. Why can't you figure skating? And I'd be like, I don't have ankles. Girl, I can't skate at all. (laughs) um, So after many years of like sibling rivalry things where I just wanted to be as cool as Emma and everything, when I got into fashion and modeling and we watched the show together... When I auditioned for the show, she was the only person who thought I could make it. Wow. And it was so fucking rad. So big it's up just to nice Emma. to have someone believe in it you. It was really cool. And specifically someone who I thought was so cool and talented. She is so cool and so talented. Um, yeah, it was really nice because everyone thought I was stupid and insane, which I was. Nope. Uh, but Emma was just like, yeah, fuck yeah. How and the then, fuck are you going to know unless you try? And when I didn't get it, when I didn't get Canada's Next Top Model season two, she was like, well, we'll audition for season three. Aww. There was no season three. Sure. So <laughs> fuck you, Canada. But that's why they don't have a room, Canada. Big sisters. <laughs> They're pretty OK. Um, so Giselle Sampson, uh, she went on to be a hostess on Carnival Cruises. OK. That was her biggest thing. Great. She did some photo stuff, but primarily she was on Soul Train. 
the 18th Annual Music Awards in 2004. So dancing stuff. Right. Uh, she was on E! True Hollywood Stories as herself in 2006. Why? I don't know what the episode was about. Oh. I tried to find it and I couldn't. Spouse, can you figure out? 2006, Giselle Sampson, what the fuck was that E! True Hollywood story about? Um, and then she was in a 2018 short film called Black. Huh. I don't know anything else about it. But it seems like it makes sense that she would be more like film and TV. Yeah, I feel like her personality is a lot bigger than her photos. Absolutely. And you get a lot of encouragement when you're in film and TV. Oh, yeah. As yeah. opposed to modeling, being a model. which is just crush, you either crush, get it crush. or you don't. Yeah. Um, that's great. Yeah. Uh, next week. Next week. We're looking at a sexy photo shoot and a surprise guest. And travel. And we're traveling. I saw the Arc de Triomphe. I think I know where we're going. Where? Is it Ohio? I think it might be Ohio. Yes! We're off to Ohio! Finally, Ohio! <laughs> uh, we don't have a lot of time left, but no, very we quickly. forever. Um, Let me know who you saw this week. Oh, yeah! So I've seen so many people. Whew, you have to a, pick one. I know. Okay. I know. You You have your phone out. You have a list. I have a list. Jesus and, Christ. Well, it's specifically, I'm going to pull up this picture because, so, um, before you we went on vacation, of, of course I did. Of course I took a picture of this girl in the crowd. Um, so we went to the Maggie Rogers concert um, at Echo Beach yes. in Toronto. Uh, and it was so many cool young women. Uh, so did you even get to experience Maggie Rogers or were you just looking at all the cute girls? I mean, yes, I experienced Maggie Rogers, but the things we went very early. We were there like an hour and a half before the opener. We were there so early. Sure. So I had so much time to look at outfits. Um, and there were like, I could, I could go on for days. But the one girl I'm going to pick um, was wearing these high-waisted denims, like button up the front, like 70s denims, sort of wide legs. Right. Darky, the middle, middle dark denim. Okay. Like not a light wash. And then a crop top button up the front, um, like bustier type thing with a like Ooh. Uh, floral pattern. I'll show it to you. Okay. Yeah. A little strappy number. It almost looks like, like a homemade shirt. It almost does. Like it looks like your mom su- sewed it. Sew it. I mean, I could make that. Yeah, you could absolutely make that. Tortoiseshell buttons. I think the print is like trees or or leaves. Sure, it's like a beige. Yeah, it looks like it. It's it, the coloring is like fantastic. Caramel. It's it's definitely a fall color palette. I and would then say a summer cut. Yeah, and a yeah, sun, yeah absolutely. Um, but then what I really liked her. I mean, her hair with the clips. You know how I struggle with clips. Mm-hmm. I have tried to clip my hair. And I Talk get stressed about it out a lot. about it. Uh, but her sunglasses, so it's 2019. Trend is those itty bitty tiny little narrow sunglasses. Like. I have not gotten on board with those. I'm not on board. I'm too old. I bought giant heart shaped glasses. I love a giant sunglass. <laughs> so this girl has glasses that are of that style, but like ever so slightly larger. Right. So they're bordering on a normal size sunglass, but they're still of the aesthetic of the small sunglass. And they are like a pale pink frame yep. with a like purpley toned. That's lens, what my heart shaped ones, ones are. Which is what your heart shaped ones are. Exactly. <laughs> it was just all, and like she's got like sort of 70s hair, like center parted, like wavy, frizzy, long hair with the clips. Overall, great look. Absolutely Shout gorgeous. Out to the definitely lesbian who is wearing camo head to toe. Here Loved for it. you. Shout out to all of the shaved heads. There were like 8,000 shaved heads. Right. Cute as fuck. All of them. What did you see? Oh, the thing that I saw. So I was really bummed. I was really happy <laughs> when I went back to work, but I was also very bummed mm-hmm. because I was going back to work. Yeah. And it's the, the sweet, sweet game of being a freelancer where you can never fully appreciate your vacation time because you don't know when your next gig is coming up. Stress. Yeah. So you're stressed the whole time and you don't get to appreciate it. And then once you have your new gig, it's basically starting like the next day mm-hmm. and you lament over... The missed opportunities of (laughs) your time off. Yeah. So I was I got my coffee in the morning and I was on my way to work and I saw a girl riding her bike and it was like 
like an older style bike mm-hmm. and I don't know anything about bikes but it had like the curvy handlebars yeah, like and like bike, big wheels step through a city yeah. bike that's the one yeah and she was in full on like modern prairie girl dress yes. so it must have been and now she's sitting so I don't know for sure but it must have been about like a just below the knee length skirt right it was like a reddish brown color mm-hmm. A uh, belt at the waist, just a regular brown belt, and then a white prairie style top, God. Uh, which was sh- like a uh, no sleeves, so mm-hmm. like tank top ish, but then with like ties at the throat. Cute. It was literally the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, and it motivated me for two whole days of going to work until I started working from home instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, girl on a bike. <laughs> Thank you, girl on the bike, for making me go into the office for two whole days. Two whole days! And That's now I is. am working. It's just like in the outside of my balcony. Yeah, which is a good place. Um, yes, Buzz? I Sorry, I've just I've done a little bit of research. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, just to circle back very quickly mm-hmm. to uh, Giselle Sampson's March 2006 episode of E! Mm. True Hollywood Story. Thank you. The true Hollywood story was about America's Next Top Model. Yeah! <laughs> oh, come on now. It's two on the nose. <laughs> well, thank you. That makes sense. That makes come on, sense. season one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So that definitely works. Um, can you tell us about some social media? Yes, absolutely. So you can follow us on the internet. Um, we are on Twitter at, at Resting on Pod. We are on Instagram at Resting on Pretty Podcast. Uh, we are on Gmail at Resting on Pretty Podcast at gmail.com. Send us your questions. Send us your thoughts. Send us your concerns. What's up? Do you have any cool outfits? Send There's a lot cool of concerns yeah. this early in modeling. Give us, give us some of them. Um, spouse uh, can be found, aka JK Hooper Macedo, can be found online at Ghost Vanity, various places. Um, and then we want to do a quick shout out. <laughs> Would recommend being online for he a Twitter follow. <laughs> loves to be online. Uh, very good at online. Um, so you'll have already seen this, listener, because um, it will be all over all the ponds. But we have only just today got our illustration, um, our show image. And we're so stoked about it's it. It's so, so it's good. So- <laughs> Great. Um, so we want to shout out um, Julia Monson. I'm hoping that's how you say your last name. Monson. Um, who did our illustration for us um, and who like is prepping for getting married and doing a bunch of other things and uh, has like a job and shit and was willing to do this job for us. And She's taking the time to make us look like drawings. We look so amazing good. <laughs> and we love it so much. So thank you so much to her. Um, we're so stoked. Uh, go check her out. She's on Instagram. Uh, oh no, I don't have her Instagram follow. But um, if you just look up Julia Monson, you'll find her. And we'll absolutely have it for you next yeah, it'll episode. Be in the, it'll be in the show notes, etc. It, it is Jules Monson. It's Jules Monson. J-U-L-E-S-M-O-N-S-O-N. On Instagram. Perfect. Brilliant. Folks, folks thanks for listening. I know this yeah. was a long episode. But Ugh. it was very important to it was us. So important. And, and I hope it was important we to you. you. And it's great. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to stop? <laughs> <laughs>